Well, hello everybody. In this episode, we're going to be talking about how to rough in and install a laundry sink. Uh, around here, we call it a laundry tub. Some people call these a utility sink. Uh, and in the code book, they call it a laundry tray. Uh, I think the reason for that is some of the older ones had that drying or wringing out area for your laundry before uh, dryers were popular. Uh, but they do refer to this as a laundry tray in the code book if you're looking for it. So let's get started. One of the first things I want to point out on your laundry sink or your laundry tub is uh, how deep this thing is, how deep this base is. And it doesn't give you a whole lot of room underneath here. So when you're roughing it in, there's a couple things that you can't do that you would normally do for a standard lavatory. One of those things would be you can't studer vent this. You can't have a 90 coming out with your air admittance valve or your auto vent or whatever you want to call it uh, because it's too much. It sticks up too high and it bumps the back of this thing. So your measurements are going to be down a little bit lower. So I'm going to pull this thing out and we're going to look at how the rough end was done. Here's our rough end layout for our laundry tub. Now just remember what I said, you got to keep these things down low to clear that big tub. Uh, now there's not really any codes on these heights or anything like that. Uh, we just have our standards and it's what we've come up with over the years that seems to work the best for us. Remember you can't 90 up and put a studer vent on this because you can't put the studer vents in the wall. They got to be poked out where you can get to them. And it would hit the back of the tub and you'd never be able to push this thing all the way against the wall. So no studer vents, which is an air admittance valve or um, some people call them an auto vent. It's a little thing that lets air in but won't let the sewer nasty gas out. So our standards are for this drain, we're going to come up 14 inches to the center. And we're going to set that right there. And of course, our arm over here in the wall is kind of what's giving that all of its support. Now for these stops, our stub outs for our water supply lines, we're going to put those at 16. Uh, it's nice and close right there on top of it. You do want to keep these valves kind of close. Um, we put a what we call a bar backing on here and this is something you can get at a plumbing supply house. They're really neat how these clips work and then uh, the last guy who trimmed this out decided he was going to go ahead and put his little discussions on here. But there's no sheetrock here but you'd have those to cover up your little holes on your sheetrock. But that's pretty much it. It's an easy layout design here. Um, it's not that bad. Now there is a code on this drain that you can tie this drain actually into the standpipe of your wash machine, which would be your wash machine drain. Um, and that's in there, that's an old way of doing it because the laundry tubs used to sit right next to the wa wash machine because you'd wash your clothes and then you'd wring them out on that and then go hang on the clothesline. Well, don't really do that so much anymore. Now you see these uh, utility sinks in garages or in just a utility room or maybe it's some kind of wet bar area or something. Uh, but that's the basic design for it. It's pretty easy. Well, now that I've got my rough in where I want it, uh, I'm here to install this thing. So uh, you're going to pick up whatever laundry tub you want. Um, most of the time, these legs, you have to put it together. There's instructions. It's a couple bolts, a couple screws. It's not that bad. Um, but when trimming this thing out, sometimes you're going to get a laundry tub that's already drilled out back here. But I don't know if you can see, there's several little holes here. They're kind of guide holes uh, for whatever um, type of faucet or device you want up here. Uh, but the first thing I would do is I recommend going ahead and laying this thing down. Now if uh, you're on a concrete floor or something like that or there's a risk you might scratch the face of this thing because remember people are going to see the face of this thing. Even though this is a utility or you know something that you know, it's not really fancy. It's not your kitchen sink. It's not your master bathroom. But uh, people are pretty particular so don't scratch this thing up. Uh, set something on the ground. Find a scrap piece of carpet or something like that and uh, protect that finish on the front of this thing. But I would go ahead and mount my faucet. Just go ahead and screw this thing off. Get it all lined up nice and tight. And then go ahead and put your supply lines on here. Take a pair of pliers, get that tight. And guys, this drives me crazy. These little stickers, just get rid of the stickers. Make it look all nice and pretty and fancy. I hate stickers. But anyway, um, that's pretty much it. Now we're going to stand it up and put it up against the wall. Now that you're at this stage, um, you're going to want to center this thing up on that drain or 
centered up on that cavity. You know, our, our rough end guy might have missed by an inch or so this way and that way, and it might be sitting in a little cavity. So you might have to bump it one way or the other. Uh, make it look pretty. This is this is the trim out part. It's all about what it looks like. You know, most people don't know plumbing. All they know is oh, the water comes out and it looks pretty. So <laughs> always be thinking about that when you're trimming stuff out. Now, um, I would recommend going ahead and putting your supply lines. Let's go ahead and put them on the stops. Of course, you're going to have to put the stops on. The stops were already here for me because somebody else has done this, uh, and that's they're not so bad. But I would go ahead and I'd get these things on hand tight. Uh, always start your threads by hand. Um, that way you don't cross thread anything. Now these supply lines do have a little washer in there. And sometimes you can get them tight enough with your hands and they won't leak. But I highly do not recommend that. Go ahead and get you a pair of pliers and give it a couple twists just to make sure you're good and tight. Now you can over tighten those things and they'll start leaking. So just remember that. You'll get the feel of it. Um, but now... With our drains here and our standards, our standards now, uh, we always make it to where you're gonna have to use a tailpiece. Now this is a double-ended compression fit and tailpiece. You can cut it and get two of them out of it. Uh, but this type of tailpiece is not gonna work on your laundry sink. You're gonna have to have what we call a top hat. It's flat like that. A lot of kitchen sinks use these uh, when you're dealing with a basket strainer or something like that. And it does have a little top hat washer. Most of the time the sink's going to come with this black piece and it'll probably have that top hat fitting. Now my piece has already been cut for me because we install this one a lot. But you'll go ahead and you get that up on there. Screw it in. These are pretty much going to be hand tight. Uh, a lot of people I see they'll get it real tight and then they'll take their channel locks and just bump just one more time to seal that thing up. Um, now, if you're not cut, what I would do, I got my P-trap here. Um, I'd go ahead and put my trap adapter, glue it on, go ahead and get this down here, and then you could take your P-trap part and line it up and go, you know, this would be hanging down and you can cut the rest off. You want it to sit down in this socket. You see that socket on there? Uh, I see a lot of people just barely put it in there, but it, it really works out if you get it down deep in that socket. Uh, it's less chance of a leak, so I always try to get all the way down in there. Now, if it's too much, it's going to push you down and be all weird. But then you can come up like this. You're going to want to leave your little compression, your little plastic compression fittings kind of loose when you're putting this together. Um, but once you get them all started, and there are little uh, beveled washers here. Brass ones used to be called ferrules, but uh, I don't know. Not too many people call those a ferrule. But go ahead, get it tight. And this is a pretty easy. So there's not a whole lot to this one. Uh, and then, anytime you're trimming something out. Before you're done, you're going to want to look at things. You're going to want to shake some things around. Is that P-trap look straight? You know, it, it, cosmetics is a lot when you're trimming things out because people are looking at it. So, I mean, it might work. It might be the best thing in the world. But if it's crooked or got a scratch on it, somebody's going to fuss. So, but that's that's pretty much the whole deal. It's real simple. Um, like I said, not a whole lot to it. So, I hope you can set you a laundry tub now. Thanks a lot.